Two members of the All Progressives Congress have pleaded with an Abuja uh, High Court to void the party's Kogi governorship primary elections held on April 11th. Real One Akpanachi and Yahaya Seidu Nuhu, in an originating summons filed by their counsel, Promise Obudu, sued six of the contestants as first uh, to six defendants. Other defendants are the APC and the Independent National Electoral Commission as seventh and eighth defendants, respectively. The plaintiffs are alleging violation of the Electoral Acts 2022 and the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the primary elections. They specifically pray the, court, uh, the courts to disqualify the first two six defendants. They also claim that the six defendants were still political appointees, uh, public servants at the time they contested the governorship primary elections of April 11th. Now, on Saturday, November 11th, 2023, eligible voters in Kogi State will be queuing up again to choose a new governor after the completion of two four-year terms by the incumbent Yahaya Bello. Already, it's shaping up nicely for a great contest, but the state chapter of All Progressives Congress could be headed for a rather bumpy ride towards that date. What with the controversy surrounding its primary election last weekend to nominate a governorship standard bearer. For more on this, we are now being joined by one of APC's governorship aspirants in Kogi State, Professor Stephen Ikani. Many thanks and welcome to Newsday. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Now, um, let's begin with um, what we Shaitan read earlier on the intro about the um, Mr. Real One Akpanachi and Yahaya Seydunuhu, who are asking the Abuja High Court to cancel the um, Kogi governorship primary. They're saying that it was basically in violation of the Electoral Act and the Constitution. Do you stand with them regarding this? Well, I think, um, thank you very much. Uh, I can speak on the, the conduct of the, the purported primary election. I am not in the full picture of the Federal High Court case that we have mentioned. So are you, are you, did everything go smoothly? Hello? I can hear you, Professor. Did everything go smoothly based on your own observations or you think that um, there's cause for Fine. concern? Fine. That is where I will come in. Uh, everything couldn't have gone smoothly when there was no election. Um, the, the primary election, governorship primary election, which was scheduled to hold on the 14th of uh, April 2023, did not hold because um, on that fateful day, these elections are supposed to be held in all the world centers of Kogi State. In Kogi East, where I come from, Kogi East is an editorial district. There were neither materials nor electoral officers to conduct the election in question. As at 8 o'clock in the morning, I went around my world. There was nobody, no electoral officer, no material. As at 12 noon, the party members from my ward and my local government troop to my place and they're all complaining that they were tired of waiting for electoral officers or material to commence the process of voting. But then I told them, I said, it could be a logistics problem. They should have their patience. Let's wait a little bit that they could arrive any time. But surprisingly, up to 1 o'clock, 1.30, even up to 2 o'clock, when the party members were supposed to be closing from the exercise, there were no materials or no officers, and in summary, no election took place. Most of all, all the party members in my ward and the local government no, did not vote in that exercise. Neither could I vote, because there was no officer to conduct the process in my ward as well. That is the situation. 
Okay, so, I mean, what you've just described uh, sounds like something that, uh, you know, the, uh, the grievances that I'll say that has been expressed by you and other aspirants um, should pave a way for judicial redress. So I want you to, um, do you uh, believe that the judiciary would eventually, you know, maybe decide who the authentic candidates, uh, you know, for the various uh, political parties with, you know, some, of course, facing outright uh, uh, disqualif uh, disqualifications? Do you think that that's the next step here? I mean, what do you intend to do about these elections that have, some have called uh, a selection? Well, so far, I think the, the judiciary has a financy, but so far, as I speak with you uh, this afternoon, we have put up a complaint across to relevant authorities, the, the All Progressive Congress, National Working Committee, the National Chairman of the Party, and the uh, and INEC chairman. Uh, that is the stage we are, we are now, to the best of my knowledge. And I believe that these two bodies will do everything possible to ensure that the right thing is done, and so that the party can also succeed in the general election. That is my belief. Because they have been entrusted with the responsibility to ensure uh, a smooth conduct of this exercise. Professor Ikani, thank you for clearing that up. But there's a bit of um, contradiction to an extent in terms of what people are saying happened um, during the primaries. We understand that the observers like the coalition of the independent election observers actually scored um, Kogi State or Progressive Congress governorship primary election as free fair and credible, and that coalition actually consists of over 500 independent observers. So are these 500 sadly mistaken, or what do you think? What do you think they are looking at that is making them, you know, give their own observation that is in stark contrast to yours? Well, I would not know how somebody would call the conduct as free and fair when uh, I, I believe there was no election at all. My colleagues are there, and they were full addressed the press about what happened on that day. And uh, not less than three or four of us attested to the fact that there was no voting, there was no election, and that we could not even vote. The party members were disenfranchised as they could not vote. So if I like is a uh, uh, scoring the conduct as free and fair, I think the reason is best known to them. I would not know that. But so far, by my assessment, and as far as my constituency is concerned, there was no election. Okay, so um, I want to find out what you think about, you know, the turn of, uh, the turn of thought that has said that there has been uh, a lot of nepotism uh, concerning this uh, primary election crisis. And uh, what I'm, I'm seeing here is that uh, Mr. Usman Ododo, who emerged the winner uh, for the primary elections, of course, was able to get to this position because uh, the, you know, the governor, you know, I'm uh, sorry, um, Yahya yeah, Bela said that other people should step down, including the deputy governor, uh, Edward Onoja. Now, there are claims that this, uh, this person is directly related to uh, Yahya yeah, Bello. Is this something that you can confirm, or is it, do you just believe that this is uh, an anointed candidate uh, that has been uh, put forward, and maybe he even has the capacity to you know, be the one to run for uh, governor this time around? Uh, well, I, I will not be able to speak on the capacity of the candidate in question to run for the election, for the success of the party, uh, but rather it is the process that uh, we are questioning. And um, that for me, from my own judgment, the conduct of this primary has nothing to do with the governor. There was a panel that was entrusted with the responsibility for organizing this election, which was delegated from the national headquarters of the party. They should take the blame. I, I don't think uh, uh, anybody will be justified by passing the blame on the governor. Governor is not the panel that organized the election. And then coming to the 
uh, all that was expected to organize the primary, governorship primary uh, election. Coming to the issue of uh, whether the party or issue of uh, the, the candidate in question uh, or people step down or people withdrew, it's a normal thing. 100 people can come out for nomination. At the point of election, some can step down. Some can withdraw. But for, for reason best known to us, we did not withdraw. I did not withdraw from that contest. For those that withdraw, I think it's a voluntary withdrawal. But what we are saying is that the process was not conducted. And like I told the press, when we had a party with the press, some, with, with two, three of my colleagues, we had a joint press conference. And we all informed Nigerians that there was no election. Then, of course, the question is, there was no election, but there was a result later. And that is what I question. I say I have never seen uh, such a situation where uh, there was no examination, but there is a result. It, it looks somehow it's very, very abnormal. One process leads to the other. So if there's no election, of course, then there couldn't have been a, a result of who won or who did not win. I think the same electoral act that we are pointing out uh, is very clear. The electoral act of 2022, section 84, is very, very clear that the procedure for conduct of primary can be by direct, indirect, or consensus. And it went further to state very clearly that a political party that adopts the method of direct primaries procedure for the conduct of its governorship primary election shall give members of the party equal opportunity to vote in that election. But this is where we are. ABC members from various world complaining here and there. We could not see anybody. There was no election materials. There's no officer, no electoral officer. We couldn't vote. It was obvious to both INEC and, of course, I believe, security agencies as well. But all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden I think, a result emerged. So that is why we're questioning how it came about that result. Thank you, Professor. Clearly, you're not content with, with um, the outcome. Just wondering if you would consider jumping ship, and by that I mean um, going to another party, if you, are, if you feel disgruntled about this uh, whole situation. You know, I don't think for now I consider going to another party. APC is my party. And I think running away from a problem is not the solution to that problem. We are members of this party, so we must, we must stay with the party, we must live within the party. We should contribute our effort towards resolving any problem on ground. Running from one party to another, to me, it does, it's, not a, it's not a way out. For a democratic setting, we must all contribute ideas towards a peaceful resolution of any issue. If we come out to say, this is supposed to be like this, this is not supposed to be like this, and then, of course, the authorities concerned, the APC headquarters, the INEC, ultimately will take steps to resolve crises. I believe it's when crises are not resolved that people go to court and all that. But I still strongly believe that the authorities of these two statutory bodies are equal to the task of resolving the issue at hand. And then we should remain in APC so that we contribute, continue to see to the progress of the party so that we can move forward and achieve total victory in the general election. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Stephen Akani, of course, one of the Kogi State's APC governorship aspirants. Thank you for being here on Newsday. <laughs>